Hello out there YouTube community. I have another video here. This time we're going to be working on my 2015 Chevrolet Malibu LT with the 2.5 liter direct injection gas engine, non-turbo. Uh, the replacement part is the Dorman number 918806. All right, and what this part is, this is your intake camshaft rocker arm solenoid control valve. Okay, these are a problem item on the car. Uh, GM had released a technical service bulletin, I think, on these items where dealerships would honor the warranty on them up to 125,000 miles or eight years, whichever comes first. And mine is now nine years old and I have a little over 134,000 miles on the car, so mine is out of warranty. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of engine covers. There's a cover for the battery. All right, there's not a lot of things that are visible on the car. So today's video, we're going to look at how to replace this when you get a P16CF code for your check engine light. My code is pending, so that means my solenoid is on its way out the door and it has not completely failed yet. All right. Uh, these come with everything you need. They come with replacement bolts and the gasket assembly. Uh, I paid a little over $150 for the part at Advance Auto Parts. So check with your local part suppliers and your GM dealerships for the best price. All right, GM dealerships, you're going to get certified mechanics. They quoted me at $169. I got the quote after I already ordered the part. So there's not much difference in the price. Uh, the symptoms of P16CF. All right. Your engine will be limited to 4,750 RPMs and your car will not have its maximum power. All right. And the other thing you will have is reduced fuel economy. All right. If you watched my short on this car, I was driving at 45 miles an hour on flat ground. I was averaging over 50 miles to a gallon. When the MIL code is present, and the valve is not functioning correctly. The most I was getting was 42. So you will see a sharp drop in your fuel economy because the engine control module cannot properly calculate the valve timing to maximize your fuel economy. That's also going to increase your emissions. All right. Step one, anytime you are working on electrical components of the car, you always disconnect the negative battery terminal. All right. Kind of like lockout tag out if you are in a factory setting, if you're familiar with that. All right, to remove the battery cover, there are two little plastic tabs. All right, to remove the cover, you push the tabs in, pull up and towards yourself. All right, it comes off real easy, as you can see. This is simply a dust cover. This is designed to help prevent the battery terminals from corroding. All right, you will need a 10 millimeter socket to disconnect the negative battery terminal. All right, and the reason you wanna disconnect the negative battery terminal, things like your starter and your alternator, your ignition coils, and some of your engine sensors are still hot even when the key is off. All right, you disconnect the negative battery terminal to prevent a short from occurring and toasting other sensors on the engine. It also prevents you from becoming a victim of electric shock. All right. Now, when you disconnect the negative battery terminal, that'll clear all the codes in the control module and completely reset them. All of your emissions controls will be reset to pending. So the car will need to be driven about 50 miles after the repair is made. To take the engine cover off the cylinder head, you have three bolts. They are a T30 Torx bit. All right, and make sure to be gentle with these bolts. You have an aluminum cylinder head with steel bolts, so it's very easy to strip the threads. So you gotta have gentle hands when you do this. As you can see, I'm just breaking them loose for now. I also recommend carrying nail polish remover or rubbing alcohol. 
Uh, the Dorman replacement part, the gasket will come packed with Cosmoline on it to prevent corrosion because it's a steel gasket. You will need to get that Cosmoline off of the gasket surface before you install the part. Gasket surfaces should always be free of any type of debris or any type of liquids before you install a part that uses a gasket. Acetone and nail polish remover and rubbing alcohol are solvents. They will dissolve any type of oils or residues on the gasket surface, making the gasket surface safe to install your replacement part and gasket. All right, you will also need to remove your intake system as far as the air cleaner and the induction part of it. All right, for that, you will need an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 on this part of the assembly. And since a lot of these components are plastic, you will have to be very careful not to yank or try to force anything off of the vehicle, okay? You have to work gently because the polyethylene, these the polyethylene that these components are made out of can get brittle over time from the heating and cooling of the engine. They will break very easily if you try to force them. All right, as you can see, I loosened the fittings. All right, so you just wiggle them off. Okay, now that's disconnected. As you can see, I got a bolt there. It doesn't look like there is a bolt on this side. I'm gonna grab my flashlight, double check. Okay, we got one bolt there. That looks like it just fits into the rubber boot. As you can see, this goes down to the intake manifold. And it's kind of congested in here. So you gotta be careful. Okay, this is a 10 millimeter. My eight, seven, five sixteenths ain't fitting. If you ever wonder why you're seeing jokes on the internet about 10 millimeter sockets, that's generally because most of the bolts on a car are 10 millimeter. <laughs> Just remember, Chuck Norris never loses a 10 millimeter socket. bolt out. If you have a magnetic holder for bolts and nuts, that's also recommended so you don't drop them. Okay. All right. Now, as we can see under here, we got some plastic fuel lines and connections, but as you can see, there is the solenoid valve. All right. Um, all right. These are the plastic fittings and connections I was talking about. Um, and there's one there. All right, so I have to figure out how to get this off. Um, give me a moment, folks. I might actually have to set this phone to where it can just sit idle and record, where I use both hands. Bear with me. If I can get my. All right, so there's one of the plastic fittings to the intake. All right, they have a certain type of fitting on them to get them off. All right, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little plastic tab, like a lock ring, that keeps them in place. Um, a lot of these connections. GM uses them as a quick connect. They just snap on because usually you don't have to service the vehicle or the part. So it increases their efficiency when they're producing the vehicles, thus reducing their operating costs, which makes a more comparable selling price for the vehicle. 
Okay, as you can see, there's one here. Let's see the locking tab is in place. Let's see if I can get this engine cover off. Oh, you gotta remove the oil fill cap to remove it, okay. All right, no big deal there. Once again, this is just a dust cover for the engine. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose other than preventing a lot of dust buildup, which, looking at my engine, it's got a little bit of dust. I mean, still a little bit gets in there. Okay, as you can see, we got four ignition coils. Once again, that's why you want to disconnect the battery. Okay. But now you can see the fittings a lot better. All right, need a little bit more room to work. All right, let's see here. Set this down. Sometimes you have to push these fittings in to release the snap rings. All right. And this is a plastic fitting on the engine, so you want to be careful. Other than that, I don't see too many other connections. All right, so let's go ahead and slide this off. Without breaking anything. like there. Uh -huh. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Fucking vacuum lines are zip tied. Oh, that's a fuel line. Mm. Oops. There's my flashlight again. Alright, let me make sure to get a shot of that. Okay. Alright, if you can see in there, alright, this is a fuel line or a coolant line. Oh, it's a coolant line to the tank. As you can see, there are zip ties holding it on to this induction piece to the intake manifold. All right. You need to be mindful of that so you don't break that line. It is a rubber line, at least. Okay, one vacuum line off. Okay, so now I need this one off. Uh oh. Okay, I might actually have to let me grab a flashlight. Okay, if you can see, there is a bolt to the boot that goes to the intake manifold down here behind the engine. I might have to take that loose to get this piece off safely. This part here looks like it just presses into the rubber boot. We don't want to damage anything. So I'm going to go ahead and finagle in there and loosen that screw. If 
I can get on it. Man, I can't even get on that motherfucker. Now, if you're watching this video and you're wondering at the complexity of the design of the vehicle, all right, the reason the automakers design vehicles like this, they are trying to increase the demand for certified mechanics who have gone to some type of tech school or trade school and have an ASC certification, all right? It's not necessarily anything to, anything like conspiracy theory or anything like that, all right? All they're trying to do is have people attend a trade school, which if you're familiar with trade schools, they're usually better than college for learning skills that are applicable in the work environment. All right, I've got all the vacuum lines off. I'm safe there. So now it's a matter of getting this piece to come off without breaking anything. I should have probably waited till the engine cooled off, but when the engine cools off, plastic gets brittle. Maybe I should look for a YouTube video on how to remove just this intake piece. <laughs> I think I got to get that bolt out. Okay, there's a plastic fucking vapor line, vapor system on the back of this sucker too. Let me go ahead and get that on the video. Grab a flashlight. Okay, all right. Now you might be able to see the line I'm sh I'm focused on my flashlight. Okay, that's one of the fuel lines. All right, and that is a heat shrunk plastic line. Okay. As you can see, it's for the fuel vapor system or the fuel return. It goes to the injector rail, I see that. All right, you can't really see the fitting on the back of this plastic piece that it mounts to, but it's there. All right. Oh, where's my, where's my side cutters? This is a coolant line. All right, 
Oh, I got it to pop off. Good, I can just pop that back in now. All right. Okay, that helps. Ah, okay, so there is a connector. All right, pop that out. All right, that was a little bit easier than expected. Okay, this piece might actually be heat shrunk on. It doesn't seem to... Okay, here, I mean, you can see it's right at the top of the engine. It's not hard to get to. All right. Now that I got that at least out of the way, a lot of automotive plugs, especially ones like to the coils, and the important stuff will have little plastic connectors that are like a safety that prevent you from disconnecting them. It also prevents them from disconnecting themselves from vibration. All right. We're going to disconnect a couple of the coils since the wires run over. All right, once you disconnect the safety on it or disable it, you should be able to push down on the plug assembly and disconnect it like so. Okay, all right, so. Actually, I don't need to disconnect the coils. There's the bolts right there. Got one here. And if my focus comes on on my camera, there's one there, one there. And one there. All right. Those are going to be a 10 millimeter. Once again, steel bolts, aluminum cylinder head. Be very gentle when taking them out and putting them back in. Let's see here. Um, Okay, that one's broke loose. And as you can see, there's not a lot of torque needed to break these loose. I'm using a quarter inch drive ratchet, so that means you will not have to put a whole lot of torque putting these back in to reinstall the replacement part. All right, now that I got them broke loose, Gus, what are you knocking off of my porch? One thing about it, folks, the earth is definitely round. If the earth were flat, cats would have knocked everything off of it by now. <laughs> is knocking my Torx bits around. Oh, shit. Fucking magnet. Uh, all right, I should have a magnet in here. There we go. These are your saving grace. Telescopic magnets when working on a car. Mm, all right. As you can see, I dropped my 10 millimeter and it's fell onto the intake manifold. Let's see if we can get. I might have to get a pair of pliers in there, a pair of needle nose. And if you're ever wondering why you see 
jokes on the internet about losing the 10 millimeter socket, this would be why. All right, let's phone down for a minute. Like I said, bear with me, folks. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Ah, there we go, and I got it with the magnet. Okay, so I'm back in business. Whew, something to be mindful of. Just be careful when you're handling your tools on a car. <laughs> Ratchet extension. Okay, there's one bolt. That fuel line. Okay, those plastic pieces were on the replacement bolts that I got. Okay, voila. All right, the three bolts are out. As you can see, the unit just comes right off. Oh shit, there goes the gasket. Gasket isn't gonna be reused. Just get it off the bottom of my car. As you can see, it's magnetic, so it is a steel gasket. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, now there's a little bit of oil on the cylinder head, so we're gonna need to clean the gasket surface. I'm due for an oil change in about 1,500 miles. All right, and it's actually the engine oil that powers this system. 
All right, so what Dorman recommends is that you get an oil change soon after changing this part out. Let me see where those little plastic pieces went. Or if I accidentally tossed them. I didn't throw them in the box. I took them off the bolts. Probably shouldn't have done that. Mm. It's probably act as a gasket. Mm. Well, let me see. Oh yeah, I think they act as a gasket. Okay. All right. Mm. Where are my dust shields? Find them. Mm. All right, let me look at this replacement unit. All right. It looks like they are designed to take the plastic piece from the bolt. Okay. Mm. pieces now the GM order that I seen online did not mention anything about these little plastic pieces in the bolts all right the doorman part comes with no instructions at all on how to do this all it comes with the bolts and says it's got a recommendation to get an oil change I might be able to find that little tab. Right here. yeah when you get the doorman part this is what it comes with. That's it. No type of instructions that mentions these little plastic pieces on the bolt. GM put those plastic pieces on them bolts. So those are on there for a reason. I'm going to have to reuse the ones that GM installed at the factory. Now, while I'm changing this out and getting this all set up, the reason these parts fail is the solenoids overheat. When they overheat, it changes the ohms of resistance, all right, that they use for opening and closing and controlling the variable valve kind of thing. When you change the ohms of resistance on an electrical component, you change its voltage signal. Now the reason I went with the Dorman replacement item is Dorman puts a limited lifetime warranty on this part. So as long as you own your vehicle, as long as you save the original purchase receipt, if it fails for any reason, Dorman will make sure to honor the warranty and you will get a replacement part. Sure to wipe off the cylinder head. <clears throat> All right. 
Okay, and as you can see, even with using the rubbing alcohol, I still got a small amount of oil off the cylinder head. Like I said, you're going to want your gasket surfaces free of any debris or material or liquids. Uh, all right. Now, the nice thing about these gaskets, just like the GM unit, they come with little tabs, so they only fit one way. So the gasket, you can't screw up. As you can see, fits perfect on there. Okay. Grab the long bolt in the center. Okay. Now, when lining this up to put the bolt in, it is very important to not cross thread. So, what you will want to do is use your fingers to get it lined up and threaded. Okay, as you can see, I cannot pull the bolt out. The bolt has a few threads. So now I'm gonna put the other two bolts in and they're gonna be finger loose. This is so you do not cross thread the bolts into the cylinder head and strip threads out of the cylinder head. Okay. All right, that bolt's good. Right. Okay, you'll typically know when you got the bolt threaded because once you get a couple threads you won't be able to pull it out with your hands now from there you will want to gently thread them in I don't recommend putting the an air ratchet or anything like that on these when you are threading an aluminum cylinder head with a steel bolt okay I recommend using your hands it's gonna take a little bit longer but you're gonna make sure to not thread not cross thread or strip the head Now, they're going to start getting tight when they get down to that plastic piece. It looks like that plastic piece does act like some kind of gasket. Under most conditions, you should replace all gaskets. Like I said, GM's literature didn't mention replacing the bolt or that there was a gasket on the bolt. Dorman comes with no instructions. So what I will need to do is I will need to check my oil level regularly to make sure I do not have an oil leak after I put this part in and get this car started up and running again. All right. They also might just prevent you from over torquing the bolt. Now, once you get these bolts torqued down onto the unit, you'll start to feel the bolt tighten up. What you'll want to do is make sure to evenly torque them so you don't distort the gasket. All right, if you distort the gasket or unevenly torque these bolts, you will create an oil leak because it is a metal gasket. It is not a carbon fiber gasket, and this is a hydraulic system most engines generate between 40 to 60 PSI of engine oil pressure when they are at their operating temperature of around 190 to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. However, on a cold start, when the oil is thicker, especially in the wintertime, if you're up north like I am, you can get between 60 to 80 pounds of oil pressure on a cold start till the engine warms up and the oil heats up and thins out a little bit. This system might even be under more pressure because it's using a metal gasket. I don't have the technical specs. The GM service departments at the dealerships would likely know that. 
Okay, so now I got them all tightened up. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, I got a worn out ratchet, so I can't really over torque bolts too much with it. And voila, I'm ready to plug the sensor back in and I am ready to do the reassembly of the engine components and test drive the car. As always, folks, thanks for watching.